I call this meeting of the Davenport Community School District Board of Directors to order. We're glad to have all of you here this evening. This should be a grand evening. Director Sherwood, would you please uh, read our priorities? Uh, the Davenport School Board establishes the following priorities to ensure the academic success of all students. Provide leadership and direction to improve the overall learning environment in our classrooms, schools, and district, including the health, safety, security, and happiness of students and staff. Direct and support actions, prog programs, and activities which reduce the impacts of poverty on our students, their families, and our community. Thank you. Director Snyder, would you please read our mission and vision statements? Our mission statement is to enhance each student's abilities by providing a quality education enriched by our diverse community. And our vision statement reads, education that challenges conventional thinking, prepares all students to compete in a global society, and inspires our students, parents, staff, and community to answer the question, what if? Thank you very much. We're going to get started right away with our recognitions. And Norm Bauer, uh, you're going to lead this. Right. Uh, yeah, good evening and, and welcome to everyone. Uh, I really appreciate the school board giving us this opportunity to just brag a little bit tonight. My name is Norm Bauer and I'm the development director for the Davenport Schools Foundation. Since 1987, we've been operating with the mission statement to provide resources to enhance the educational opportunities and experiences available to students in the Davenport Community Schools. One function is to provide scholarships, of course. And as you board members know, but many listeners here do not, uh, our foundation also operates the Great Minds program, and that funds many grants for individual classrooms, money for speakers, experiments, unique projects, and field trips. We also do district-wide programming with the curriculum department here for grades K through eight. Every student in those grade levels goes to places like the ballet, the symphony, the figgy, Nahant Marsh, Niabi Zoo, and other community resources. It truly enriches their learning experience. Now, coordinated by Gene Conrad, who is here tonight, this program makes our offerings unique in the Quad Cities, proving yet again that we truly are a district of distinction. Our 15-member board is represented here tonight by President John Korn and our scholarship co-chair, Manny Fritz. Please stand, gentlemen. Along with these dedicated volunteers, Gene and I serve as ambassadors for the school district through the Great Mind Projects, civic events, and media relations. Just three weeks ago, we hosted a gala for 200 people at the Modern Woodman Park to celebrate Davenport students, teachers, alumni, and friends. We raised money for Great Minds, but just as importantly, we raised the awareness of the community about the quality of education in our classrooms and the high performance levels of our students and alumni. We just concluded our Tribute to Teachers campaign to boost teacher morale and to raise funds for the foundation. Several of you board members took, play, took part in that and we appreciate it. We enjoy a very positive working relationship with all the key administrators here at the ASC and in the individual buildings. We help them, they help us. Thank you for supporting this mutually beneficial enterprise. We especially salute Superintendent Art Tate and the district liaison, Rachel Steiner. Tonight, we're celebrating another graduation of the district's senior classes. Specifically, we are honoring our talented sons and daughters who have won more than $51,000 in scholarships from the Davenport Schools Foundation. There were 36 winners, several of whom are here tonight, accompanied by their parents. In addition, we will be writing checks in August to winners of multi-year scholarships from the past for another $13,000. So our grand total here is going to be $64,000 a record that we are so proud to announce tonight. Before I introduce the winners, I want to acknowledge our scholarship co-chairs, Manny Fritz, who is here tonight, and Sherry Fries, who isn't, for all their work in selecting the winners. Other retirees, grads, and teachers help with the special selection teams, including people like Scott McKissick, Brian Ehlinger, Michael Reese, Clint Balser, Ryan Wewertz, Tyler Finley, Susan Perry, Jack King, Cynthia Herring, Brenda Jordal Buckles, Judy Hammond, Vicki Kepi, Andy Zinn, and Betty Nelson. These folks represent a much larger team of volunteers for this big evaluation process. Thanks to all of those members as well. 
And I must offer a special salute to our many donors who create and add to these scholarship monies every year. They play a quiet but very significant role tonight, and we truly appreciate their vision and generosity. I want to talk briefly about three new scholarships we're presenting here for the first time. The new music scholarships at North High and West High were donated by John Weiss of Davenport. His late wife, Hene Fujiwara Weiss, taught music in the Davenport schools for 20 years. After her death in 2004, John created a music scholarship in her honor for Central students. Last year, he decided to expand the scholarship for North and West students. And he challenged the music boosters at both schools to come up with matching $1,000 awards so that a boy and a girl grad at each school could benefit. Music parents being the grade A fundraisers that they are, they met the challenge. So tonight we are giving out $4,000 in new scholarships for music. Other, uh, our, other new music or our other new scholarship is the Jack King Music Scholarship, named for a retired Sudlow music teacher who is here tonight. You'll hear more about him from that key donor, from the scholarship's key donor, Susan Perry. But it was her brainstorm to generously honor this inspiring teacher, and we are very, very grateful. Another new scholarship for the Central Hall of Honor is the Knipe Family Scholarship, worth $1,500 every year. Stanley Knipe, a 1960 Central grad, called from Houston last November saying he wanted to give back to the school. Initially, he suggested just giving a few hundred dollars, but in the course of a 40-minute conversation, he ultimately pledged $20,000 for a self-sustaining scholarship. That was an hour well spent, folks, let me tell you. <laughs> he and his, his wife, Diane, and his sister, Sharon Knipe, from St. Louis, also pitched in. They decided to make health care the focus for this new award. They cannot be here tonight, but I did want to acknowledge their generosity. Now, the CHS Hall also received a one-time bequest in the memory of a teacher from Central who died last year. His name was Orson Botter, and they're honoring uh, another member of the class of 1964, Terry Huff, with additional one-time gifts. We appreciate gifts like that, and next year it's our goal to present a new scholarship, the Friends of West Scholarship. We're halfway toward meeting our self-sustaining threshold of $20,000, and we're confident we can meet this goal with support from this generous community. Anybody who wants to write a check, talk to me after the meeting. So. At this time, I want to introduce a couple of special presenters for these first-time scholarship. First will be Dr. Susan Perry to present the Jack King Music Scholarship. Dr. Perry? First, I need to introduce Mr. Jack King and his wife, Yvonne King. So why don't you two stand, please? <laughs> and basically, I established the Jack King Music Scholarship through the Davenport Schools Foundation in honor of Mr. King. And he taught at Sudlow Intermediate School, which was then also um, a junior high, for 35 years and has given private oboe lessons for a large number of years, many more than 35. He taught my son, Michael Goodyear, to play the oboe well and has challenged and encouraged him for the last nine years. Our first recipient of the Jack King Music Scholarship is Molly Shebler from Central High School. And why don't you come on up, Molly? <laughs> She, she performed masterfully on her French horn during her interview with us and demonstrated a love of music that I really do think she's going to continue with the rest of her life. And I think now Mr. and Mrs. King are supposed to come up and have yeah. a picture because Norm Bauer, Mr. Bauer loves pictures. <laughs> Uh, next is Cynthia Herring to present the Carol Herring Memorial Scholarship. Good evening, esteemed members of the school board and audience and awesome scholarship recipients. 
It's a great pleasure for me to be here um, from Florida, although this is my hometown. Davenport's very special to me. My mother, two years ago when my mother passed away, I wanted to do something special to remember her, to honor her, and so we started the Carol Herring Memorial Scholarship Fund, and it's been two years. This is the second year we're going to be making some awards, but just a bit about my mother. She taught for about 40 years, most of that time here, 30 years, I think, in Davenport schools. She was known as a very dedicated, much-loved teacher, mostly at Eisenhower Elementary, and she was unique. I consider her my greatest teacher, my mother. She absolutely loved children. She had a passion for kids, and she would see greatness in each one, and each child mattered, and that's what my mother taught. So when we were determining who would get this award, it was important to choose someone a lot like my mother, who had a passion for life, a passion for teaching. And so it's my great pleasure to make an award to these two recipients, if they would come, please come forward. Olivia Torones, who is graduating from West High School, and Hannah Harrington from North High School. Please give them. Next is Judy Hammond to present the Class of 1959 scholarship. Good evening. I'm the chairman of the Davenport High School Class of 1959 scholarship fund. Come to think of it, I'm the whole committee. <laughs> the fundraising for this scholarship was started 20 years ago at our 35th class reunion, and we continue every year sending letters out to our classmates, and all of this money has come from our class members. With this award tonight, the fund will have given $21,000 to 25 graduating seniors since 1999. The seniors have come from all the Davenport high schools, not just Davenport Central. Madison Walker has graduated from Davenport West with a very impressive record, not only in academics, but in her extracurricular activities as well, including soccer. <laughs> in a class of 416 students, Madison is number one. I must say, I'm impressed. She will be on to the next exciting step in her life as she enters Iowa State University. Majoring in biology with a minor in business and chemistry, she will focus on a pre-veterinarian medicine. Madison is joined here tonight with her mom, Jessica Lico Avance. Madison, would you come up? And now Brenda Jordal Buckles will present the last ever Johnson School Scholarships. Thank you, Norm. Um, as Norm said, this is our last year for the Johnson School Scholarship. Um, the kids that I'm going to introduce were our little kindergartners the year that we closed. So they're sort of special to us. Um, over the last few years, we have awarded over $23,000 to these kids, and they have all gone on to do some really wonderful things. We've got nurses, doctors, business owners, and the list goes on. Fabulous kids, successful, and we're very proud of them and how they represented Johnson School. 
Our three recipients tonight are Haley Burney, if they could come up when I call their names. Haley is going to Iowa State. She is the daughter of Ron and Debbie Elliott. Giselle Hendercott is going to Iowa State. She is the daughter of Jay and Jill Hendercott. And David Solbrig, going to University of Iowa. And he is the son of Mike and Lisa Solbrig. Quick shout out to two representatives from Midwest One Bank who are here tonight. They sponsor two $500 scholarships, and we'll announce the winners in a couple of minutes. But Deb Mueller, who is the manager of branch services and operations, and Damon Colvin, the branch manager, are here tonight. Thank you so much. If you're going to stand and be recognized. Thank you. <laughs> Next Sunday, the young people we're about to meet are going to go through a milestone graduation at the iWireless Center. It'll be a big day for them and their families. We're going to help them with scholarship money and our best wishes as they continue their education and training. As I call each name, I'd like for the student to come forward, stand here, and face the audience. Um, I would also ask their parents stand when the name is called out and be recognized as their child comes forward. Please hold any applause until all are introduced. At the end, we're going to take a photograph of the students with the school board. Maria, you got to see this. It's really <laughs> a work of art. Uh, the winners include the following students. Olivia Taranez of West High School. She's won the Catherine Bell Tate Scholarship for $12,000 over four years. Her mother is Chandra McLean of Davenport. Olivia will attend the University of Northern Iowa in the fall. And as previously noted, she also won our Carol Herring Scholarship. Jacob Barrent of Central High won the Joan Kohlberg Lowen Scholarship for $4,000. He also won a Jerry Jurgens scholarship worth $1,650 and a Hall of Honor Keith Jurgens scholarship worth $1,500. His parents are jo John and Ann Barrett of Davenport. Jacob will enroll at the University of Iowa in the fall. Sadat Romulus of Central won a Helen <laughs> Poling scholarship for $1,200. In addition, he won a CHS Hall of Honor scholarship, the Jim Hester Memorial Award, worth $1,500. Her mother is Marlene Romulus of Davenport. She's going to Scott Community College in the fall. Ariel Schluey of North High School also won a Helen Poling Scholarship for $1,200. Her parents are Kevin and Kathy Schluey of Davenport. She plans to study at the University of Wisconsin at Platteville. Giselle Hendercott of West won a Helen Poling Scholarship for $1,200 along with the previously noted Johnson School Scholarship. Her parents are Jay and Jill Hendercott. She will, she will study at Iowa State University in the fall. Elise Castro of Central won the Davenport Schools Foundation Scholarship for $1,000. Her parents are Bob and Juliana Castro of Davenport. She will study at Indiana University. As noted earlier, Madison Walker won the Class of 1959 Scholarship. Please come forward, Madison. Uh, Caroline Emery from North won the Lisa Arbiser Scholarship for $500. In addition, she won one of the brand new North High Music Scholarships worth $1,000. Her parents are Richard and Dawn Emery of Davenport. She plans to enter the University of Iowa in the fall. Jessica Bennett of West High School won the Jane Grady Scholarship for $5,000 over four years. Her mother is Robin Bennett of Davenport. She will be a student at Iowa State University this fall. Hannah Harrington of North won the Marie Linky Powell Scholarship worth $1,000. She also won a Carol Herring Scholarship worth $750 and a DSF Future Educator Scholarship for $500. Her mother is Ann Harrington of Davenport. Hannah will attend the University of Northern Iowa. Naomi Elias of Central won a Jerry Jurgens Scholarship worth $1,650. Her parents are Paul and Rebecca Elias of Davenport. She's going to Scott Community College this fall. 
Nick Kepi of West High School was awarded the George Weiss Memorial Scholarship for 250. In addition, he won a Betty Nelson Career Tech Scholarship worth 300 and the Brian Kepi Memorial Scholarship worth $1,500. His parents are Carl and Vicki Kepi of Walcott. He's going to study at Scott Community College in the fall. Matthew Kronfeld of West High School also won the $300 Betty Nelson Career Tech Scholarship and the George Weiss Memorial worth 250. His parents are David and Rhonda Kronfeld of Davenport. He will study welding at Scott Community College. Ty Huxima of Central won a CHS Hall of Honor Meyer Memorial Scholarship worth $1,500. His parents are Chris and David Huxima of Davenport. He will be a student at Wheaton College this fall. The winner of a second Meyer Memorial Scholarship is Gabrielle Huxima. This Central senior is the daughter of Rita and Tom Huxima, and she plans to study at the University of Iowa. Madison West of Central won a CHS Hall of Honor Scholarship for $1,500. Her parents are Gary and Tammy West of Davenport. She will enroll at Florida College. Jesse Maddox of Central High School won a CHS Hall of Honor Scholarship for $1,500. His parents are Bill and Marilyn Dumoulin of Davenport. He will enroll at Drake University this fall. He also won one of the Midwest One You're the One scholarships worth $500. Mason Tope of Central won the first ever CHS Hall of Honors Knipe Family Scholarship worth $1,500. He is the son of Todd and Marnie Tope of Davenport. He plans to study at Loris College. Roy Schindler of Central won a CHS Hall of Honor Orson Bader Memorial Scholarship for $1,500. His parents are Kurt and Shana Schindler of Davenport. He will study at Norwich University. Khadija Petty of Central won a Hanai Fujiwari Weiss Memorial Scholarship for music $1,000 repeated for four years. Her mother is Nicole Petty of Davenport. She is enrolling at the University of Chicago this fall. All right. Mitchell Diamond also won a Fujiwara Weiss Scholarship for $1,000 for four years. His parents are Jim and Janice Diamond of Davenport. He will study at the University of, Iowa, of Northern Iowa. Dominic Pena of Central won the $1,000 Buttleman Arbiter Journalism Scholarship. He's the son of Christine Cannon and an Israel Pena of Davenport. He plans to study at the University of Iowa. David Solberg of West won a Johnson School Scholarship. He's the son of Mike and Lisa Solberg of Davenport, and he'll study at the University of Iowa this fall. Another Johnson School Scholarship went to Haley Burney from West. Her parents are Ron and Debbie Elliott of Davenport, and she'll be at Iowa State. Moesha Poole of West won a DSF Future Educator Scholarship worth $500. Her mother is Latoya Poole of Davenport. She will enroll, enroll at the University of Northern Iowa. Anna Haber of Central won a DSF Future Educator Scholarship for $500. She is the daughter of Chris and Beth Haber of Davenport, and she will attend St. Ambrose University. Leah Herman of West won a $1,500 Mary Means Memorial Scholarship. Her parents are Michael and Natalie Herman of Davenport. Leah will enroll at Moody Bible College. Jacob Cook of the Kimberly Center won a Betty Nelson Career Tech Scholarship worth $600. His father is Jacob Cook of Davenport, and he's going to Scott Community College. Megan Fannin-Steele of Central won a Nelson Scholarship for $600. Her mother is Mary Fannin-Steele of Davenport, and she's headed to the Johnson and Wales Culinary School. Jo Joey Diaz of North won another Nelson Scholarship for $600. He's the son of Tara Diaz of Bluegrass. He plans to study at Wyotech in Laramie, Wyoming. A.J. Peterson of West is the winner of the $300 Brad Peck Memorial Scholarship. He's the son of Diane and Craig Peterson and will attend St. Ambrose University in the fall. Caitlin O'Hare Hayes from Central won a $500 Midwest One You're the One Scholarship to study business. She is the daughter of Pamela O'Hare Bonagatti of Davenport. Caitlin will study at Drake University. Got it. <laughs> Finally, we'll go to those new music scholarships. Don Vickers of West High School won a West High Music Scholarship worth $1,000. She's the daughter of Marge and Bill Vickers of Davenport, and she will study at the University of Northern <coughs> Iowa. The other West High Music Scholarship went to David McVeigh, the son of John and Susan McVeigh of Davenport. He's going to study at Luther College. From North High, we have Jared Defaw, but we don't have Jared Defaw tonight because he is absent. 
Now he is the son of one of our school board members, Nikki. He, he won a North High Music Scholarship worth $1,000. His parents are Nikki and Daniel Defaw, and he's headed to the University of Iowa in the fall. The other North High Music Scholarship winner is Caroline Emery, a previous winner here tonight. And of course, Molly Shebler was our previously announced winner of the Jack King Music Scholarship. Ladies and gentlemen, please offer a round of applause for our scholarship winner. Now we are going to take a picture with the crew here kind of behind the school board. First, Mr. Johansson, would you want to offer any remarks? Do you want to give him a pep talk for the future? Well, All right here. I tell you what, what I was, I was thinking this is such a great opportunity really for us to honor all of you students. And I know it's probably a little warm and you're probably tired of standing there, but I really wanted to give the board an opportunity to, to say a few words. Uh, and I appreciate you offering us that opportunity. So anybody on the board want to say something to uh, the students, feel free. If not, I'll say a few words. Oh, there's Director Cool. Well, if it's warm, it's going to get warmer as school board members start to talk up here. <laughs> and so, um, boy, what a what a wonderful experience this is. You know, the most the most visual thing for me is is the grant the Johnson School Awards. This being the last class, the kindergartners that that uh, were in kindergarten when the school closed. Um, I, you know, I think I've seen all of you as I've been through schools now and again in various phases of your educational career, and now you're going on. I hope that we provided you what you need to open the door to your futures. It looks to me like you're headed in the right direction, and I hope that perhaps you will come back at some time in the near future while you're on your journey and talk to us about how it's going. We'll have some new student school board members sitting down here, uh, Hannah, was one of them and, and Carolyn couldn't be here tonight but um, come back and, and talk to us about how things have gone and how your experience in Davenport schools benefited you. Congratulations to you all. Anybody else? Director Sherwood. Yeah and we talk and as a retired teacher I can tell you that this conversation has been going on for a long time about how we uh, we we kind of get out of kilter sometimes in, in this district and every other district. Uh, we do a lot of time honoring sports people. Uh, you know, they're on the front page of the newspaper, they're this and that sort of thing. And, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But our core mission is, is you guys. It's the academics that's our core mission. And, uh, and so finding ways to honor you and to tell you how special that you are, that you're the center of, of what we do, uh, is, is really critical. And I'm glad we have an opportunity to do this tonight. I think that if we went through and, and also read not just the awards you got here tonight, but all the things you've done during your careers in your schools, all the clubs you've been involved in, all the sports you've been involved in, all the community projects you've been involved in, we'd be here all night because you're that kind of a group of, of uh, young people. And so when you go off and, and you go off to Scott and you and I and Iowa and all the places you're going to, Whitewater is a good school, uh, when you go off to those schools, you're taking a, a tradition of, of giving that uh, you've already established for yourselves to those schools and, and, and they're getting a gift. We're sending from Davenport to all those places a, a true gift and I want to thank you for, for uh, you know, honoring us with your presence in our schools. Thank you. Uh, Director Snyder. I don't want to drag this on because it is warm in here and you guys look like you're tired of standing, but we, uh, we had mentioned two of our school board members and we forgot our Miss Elise Castro standing here as well who spent many hours in here uh, uh, forced to listen to us ramble. Uh, but congratulations to you all and uh, I hope you all continue to be uh, extremely successful. Oh, hang on, hang on, Norm. We aren't quite done. Anybody else? Uh, Director Dickman. Uh, I, I'm new here, but uh, I just wanted to, to say congratulations to all of you. It's it's so wonderful to see your, your bright, shining faces and uh, and all the possibility that you represent. Director DeFowl. 
And I guess I would have to say that I'm feeling a particular uh, special fondness for this group of students because so many of you attended school with my son or performed with my children in various capacities. And so, you know, I've, I've watched you, many of you, from kindergarten to today. And it's just, it's heartwarming to see your success and know how successful you're going to be in the future and how well you represent our school district. So thank you. So now I, I'll say just a couple words. So um, this is such a fantastic opportunity for us, really, to, to honor all of you. And <clears throat> I wanted to appreciate as well uh, not only the, um, the various organizations that have offered these, especially the foundation, but I wanted to thank your parents and your families um, excuse me, <laughs> because <clears throat> I know that, that they've been with you this whole time and, and helped inspire you. It's, this is all about you, certainly, and you've done a great job, but um, I wanted to thank all of your families as well. So with that, now, Norm, you can do whatever you want. Tighter. Don't, I mean, you're really going to have to squish. <laughs> well, th this one, this one first. Then, okay. All right. I think I've got you all. This is great. I'm going to take a couple, so everybody. Okay. And we're going to do it again. Got it. Okay. Now, any parents come and do it real quick. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Students, I do, I do need a handful of you at the, end of, at the end of this session now. Step out in the hallway. We're going to do a few special photos with Molly Shevler, Hannah Harrington, Olivia Taranis, Jesse Maddox, Caitlin O'Hare Hayes, David Solberg, Giselle Hendercott, Haley Burney, and Mason Tope. School board, I really appreciate this time. This is one of our proudest moments. Oh, we'll do that, I swear. <laughs> Good for you. This guy has a memory. He's going to do fine.
you want to introduce? Call him up. All right. Our next presentation will be made by um, Michael Cole. Mike, the floor is yours. Good evening. Uh, as I uh, step to the uh, podium, I was just thinking such a class act uh, to follow. Uh, I was feeling very honored to, to be here to talk about my program, but I'm feeling very, very uh, honored to the fact that there continues to be great things going on within the, the Danport system. Uh, my name is Mike Cole, and um, I am the current president of 100 Black Men Quad Cities uh, Standing More Mentoring Program. Um, I'm extremely honored uh, to be here uh, to talk about the program. I'm going to multitask as I talk. Uh, I'm going to play kind of a photo album, if you will, uh, as I go through my comments. As, uh, as I make my comments, if you can kind of view some of the, the things that have taken place uh, over the years uh, within the program. Um, you know, I stand here um, as the president, but I truly stand here on the shoulders of, of some of the founders of the program. And I certainly have to mention the fact that uh, Jim Hester uh, was one of our first presidents uh, when the program began in 1998. Uh, when we chose Wood Intermediate as the school uh, of choice uh, to, uh, to lay out our program. Uh, the Hunter Black Men program uh, is actually emulated from a national program, uh, Hunter Black Men of America, with over 200,000 different uh, chapters throughout uh, the U.S. Um, we chose uh, to bring with these founders, uh, I mentioned Jim Hester, uh, Reverend Grimes, Melvin Grimes, uh, Reverend uh, Arthur Young, uh, Thomas Myers, uh, Howard Hunnikan. Uh, those were some of the people that, that actually got the program started. But we chose Wood Intermediate because during the period of time uh, that we started the program in the Quad Cities, uh, I'm a retired police officer, having spent 30 years, uh, and most of those years uh, I was involved in the, in the Davenport school system as a school resource officer, and then at one point, the school liaison for, for the district. But in my line of work as a police officer, I saw uh, the issues with youth, uh, unfortunately, uh, having gone on uh, uh, shootings and things of that nature, that I felt that we needed to, to do something to, to give something back. So those group of gentlemen that I just mentioned, uh, we, we met with uh, the superintendent at the time, and I believe it was Brad Allison, uh, we've had uh, Peter Flynn and several uh, school uh, superintendents over the years, uh, all of them supporting uh, uh, what we do uh, in the program. Uh, as kind of a snapshot of the different things that we do, the Stanley Moore Mentoring Program is actually our signature program, but we also have, uh, we break it down into the youth and the law. Uh, we have a city government uh, emphasis, uh, health and wellness, uh, and economic development. Um, we've, we've over the years, as you can see through the photos, um, some of the collaborations that we've had, uh, and basically we meet uh, every third Friday at the beginning of the school year from August through to May. Uh, we bring in professionals from the community that talk about their professions. Uh, we want to give the kids uh, a snapshot of whatever profession that they may be interested in. Uh, we want them to know that they have value. We want them to, to know that they have dignity, and we want to emulate those types of things. So as, the, as you see through the, through the photo, you know, some of the, the, the organizations that have uh, been a part of, of our presentations uh, to the kids. Uh, I really would like to highlight the University of Iowa, uh, who has been one of our partners from day one. Uh, we connected with uh, Nancy Humbles uh, in the diversity department there. Uh, they have this program called NBA, and it's not basketball. Uh, it's uh, nothing before academics. And we try to emulate that to the kids that, yeah, you know, you can do these other things. And I think someone mentioned about sports. But, you know, the, really the emphasis is about the, their education, and, and we try to, to uh, make sure that we uh, do that. Uh, I'm going to have some of the other, uh, you know, there's no way that I can do this by myself. 
Uh, I, I have an extremely supporting cast of folks, and I want to have them come up uh, and I call their name. Eugene Chisholm, would you come up, please? Uh, Ms. Trice, if you would come up. Uh, I don't see Gary Mayfield here. Uh, but these are the coordinators in the buildings, uh, Eugene at Wood, uh, Ms. Trice, and Gary at JB. And, and I would really be remiss that if I didn't give a shout out to the principals. Uh, Ms. Corbin is here. Uh, and she has supported us from day one. Uh, we didn't originally have JB as part of the program when we first started, but they came on board shortly thereafter uh, we got started. Uh, and I don't see uh, Sherry Schultz, but she has also been very, very supportive uh, of the program. Um, I want to uh, give a thank you. I, I have a thank you here for you, Dr. Tate, at some point. And, you know, I was kind of taking notes of Norm getting all these photo op uh, opportunities, so I hope at some point I can uh, take a few pictures as well. Uh, but Ms. Trice, thank you. Basically what it says is just uh, the support of the program uh, for this year, and I think Ms. Trice has been on board for the last couple of years, but Eugene, by all means, have been a part of the program. Uh, I, I, I lose count of how long so you've been. I have to. You've been involved. <laughs> uh, Shirley Moore, come up, if you would, please. Shirley, uh, her husband, the program is named after uh, Stanley, but Shirley, uh, uh, Stanley's no longer with us, uh, but she has stayed uh, with the program, and there you go, Shirley, as a director. Uh, we certainly uh, appreciate your uh, participation. So um, I don't know if there may be questions of me, uh, but we, we do uh, the best that we can uh, with what we have to work with. Uh, I know when I was with the school system, um, uh, like I said, as a police officer, you know, we saw that these kids had some challenges. And those individuals that I mentioned earlier, you know, we decided that we needed to give something back. Uh, we continue to do that. Uh, we've been around for 15, 16 years. Uh, we're not planning to go away uh, anytime soon, uh, as long as you guys continue to, to, to have us here. Uh, I, I know I've talked personally with Dr. Tate on many, many occasions, and uh, he is still very supportive of, of what we're doing. And as long as I can get the top man at the top to, to be a part and, 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 and happy about what we're doing, we'll continue to, to do it. Um, some of my kids came. I, I want them to stand and acknowledge. Uh, this isn't all of them. We, we deal with about 50 kids throughout the course of the school year, uh, 25 JB, 25 Wood. But I, but I want them to, some of the, stand up guys. We originally started the program as an emphasis uh, to uplift uh, African American males uh, because of gangs and a lot of things that were going on in, in the, the mid 90s and, and, and into 2000. Uh, but as you can see, I made a decision uh, during the course of uh, being the president that uh, we were gonna open this up to, to everybody, black, white, male, female. And so as you can see, you know, there's a complexion of, of the, the kids that we serve you know, that incorporates female and not just uh, the African American males. That, uh, um, I thought tonight uh, would be a night that we would uh, present. Uh, we have an essay contest that we've been running for a couple of uh, years now. Um, the kids wrote some awesome essays. However, I've not had a chance to read them all, so I'm not going to be able to present that, and I know that's kind of disappointing uh, to uh, probably the potential winner out there. Uh, but uh, every kid will get a plaque uh, similar to this one um, at the uh, end of the program. Sometime, obviously, the school ends uh, this week, but I'll make my way to the school, and we'll do a special moment where we give them the plaques, and then we'll do the winners. Uh, it's a Kindle is what we give. Um, and then the second and third place winners, uh, we partnered with the city of uh, Davenport and Park and Rex that the kids uh, will get uh, the 100-day uh, pass. You know, we'll buy that for them. Um, I wish I could buy for, I always tell them I could buy one for each and every one of them, all 50 of them. But, you know, we're 501-3C, but, you know, we, we don't always get the funds that, that we need. So um, I will entertain any questions at this point. Um, as I said, uh, you know, some of the other members of the program that are not here, uh, just so you know who else is uh, involved, uh, Larry Robeson, who is a board member, Jim Andrews, uh, Clyde Mayfield, uh, Eugene and Gary, uh, Stephen Tate, uh, Shirley Moore, um, and uh, George Guy are some of the other members uh, 
of the Hunter Black Men organization. So uh, we just hope that we can kind of, uh, in our, our 15 years, to maybe turn some of this stuff around. Um, you know, we're tired of turning on the 6 o'clock news and hearing some of our kids uh, involved in drive-by shootings and succumbing to drugs and whatnot. Uh, so we think we're making a difference. Uh, the kids sign contracts, the parents are involved at the beginning of the year, uh, so they know what the expectations are. Uh, the kids have maintained, and I am happy to say, you know, 95% of our kids, 3.0 and above. Uh, Eugene and Gary, you know, report that stuff to me. Uh, when we have special situations, you know, you know, we, it's based on, uh, their grades and um, no discipline issues. But if there happens to be, then we come out to the school and do a little extra mentoring uh, with, those, with those students. So um, that's who we are. Uh, as I said, we're not going anywhere. Um, you know, I've been a part of the district for 28 years. I retired in 2009. Um, and I, I haven't figured out this retirement thing yet, uh, what it's supposed to look like. So, but I just stay engaged uh, with kids. Uh, I grew up in a single parent family and you know, I always tell people when I give these types of talks is that you know, uh, I never knew my dad, but I try to do things that uh, would, would, would make my mom proud and, you know, and try to be better than a guy that I never knew. So uh, that's kind of what motivates me every single day uh, to keep doing what I do and um, you know, Without the supporting cast, uh, you know, I, I don't know how we can continue to do it. And certainly, you guys having us come back, uh, you know, year after year after year. You know, I've worked with Mr. Sherwood, I, I, you know, when I was a liaison, and I know Nikki and, you know, uh, and some new people, and Mr. Cool. You know, we've been on some, some boards together as well. So, um, any questions uh, of me? So, <clears throat> another truly great organization. Any comments or questions for uh, Mike. Director Sherwood. Yeah, and I just want to thank you, Mike, and, and uh, your crew and the young people. Um, I just met Eugene a couple of weeks ago. I was extraordinarily impressed with his uh, knowledge and uh, sensibility about young people. He's, uh, he's got a real handle on what needs to be done. So uh, he I'm is a diamond in the rough, no yeah, doubt. I think you've probably got, a, you've got a, probably a lot of members like that. We're in the process as a district right now of taking a survey of the kinds of organizations and internal and external that support young people uh, that are you know in need uh, of support. And uh, your organization made that list real easily. Everybody you know, that name came up right away. So uh, I want you to know that uh, a lot of people in this district respect what you do. And I've uh, been to a lot of graduations over the years. And uh, I can tell you that there are very few kids, if any, that are standing on those podiums receiving those diplomas that don't have somebody standing behind them, supporting them and encouraging them and pushing them forward. And uh, so uh, you're offering that, uh, that uh, role is, uh, is, is really critical to the welfare of a lot of kids. And I want to thank you folks for doing that. Well, thank you. Anybody else? Director Snyder. I'd like to hear from one of the kids on what this program has meant to them. Well, I actually have a, a couple of essays if, if we've got the time. Is Derek Randolph here? Or is Angela? Oh Derek? Okay. Do we have time for him to read? Because that, that was our essay topic, was what the program meant to them. And, uh, okay. If you want to. You wrote it, so if you want to read it, speak to him. Mm. Hello, everybody. Hey, <laughs> well, 100 black, uh, the 100 Black Man program is important to me because it's a program that motivates kids to do good in life. It gives kids, like, uh, it, it gives us kids to hear guest speakers and other important people talk about what they achieved and went through to get to the, where, are the, where they are today. Also, people always think you have to be black to join the program. You really don't. You can be white, black, yellow, blue. It doesn't matter. Now, with me, my short-term goals were to keep g good grades this year and do good. And I did exactly that thanks to this program motivating me to do great. At the end of the year for Wood and Media, I already received an award, first honors, which means I got a 3.5 to 3.9 GPA all year long. 
Also for me, for my high school years, I enrolled in a dual graduation program, which means I get two years of Scott Community College done in high school. So that's good. So 100 like black man programs important to all the kids because it gives them a chance to like do good things and it motivates them. Thank you. And, and I think, you can, I think um, Derek came, is that your dad? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Randolph, we wanna just, I just wanted to acknowledge you. Yeah. We can go on and on and on. You want to hear some more? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I'm Isaiah Litt. Um, well, my full name is Isaiah Ishmael Julius Litt. I go to J.B. Young. 100 Black Men to Me is a program that encourages growth and success in young adults. Another thing it is for me is a chance to expand your mind farther than what Iowa has. So we go to colleges and visit these things so that we understand our academics actually can take us somewhere. Another thing it is to me is just getting out. It's just like group mentoring. They're there for us and we're there for them. I can remember when we had a speaker and he gave us a few rules of life. He said respect yourself, respect others, and um, don't, be don't be afraid to fail. Failure is a part of success. So you learn from your mistakes and they care for us. Even though our name, despite our name, 100 black men, we aren't prejudiced or heinous. Everyone in the group is treated equally, you know. So we have colors of all races. I see this as a poor in life school skill. Don't judge because by what, well, I see it as a poor in life skill because judging somebody by what's on the outside is not the most important. Yeah. So I don't have, oh. I play a lot of sports, basketball, football, soccer, track, and I believe it all, uh, and I, I did play baseball. If I ever do make it to a professional sport, I will always come back and talk to a group. That's what I said I would do, just because, you know, they've been there. And no matter what, how old I am, I've always been preached to about grades. You got to make the grades or you can't play sports. So I make first honors. And my grandma back there will tell you she'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me come home. Yep. 100 Black Men to me is just a great and incredible program that we all should keep going. So I want to thank Michael Cole and Miss Shirley because you guys keep it going and I appreciate you. Thank you. I, uh, I think uh, before a grown man cry here, um, I think, um, Shirley, we're going to have to buy some more Kindles. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll wrap up with uh, one of our previous members, uh, Jason White, um, went through the program, and he's now at the University of Iowa. Jason may have even graduated, but he played Hawkeye football. We went up on a trip up there, and, uh, you know, what we do is coordinate with uh, Miss Humbles and they bring kids that talk about college life and Jason was one of the kids that came to talk to this group and so he tells the story about uh, when he was at Wood walking the halls and he uh, saw this, this this black gentleman dressed to the nines uh, it happened to be Stanley Moore the president of the program and he was there to have a meeting and so Jason talks about the fact that hey whatever meeting you're going to man I want to go to that meeting too because uh, look like you guys got it going on well, um, Jason did get to be a part of the program when he talked uh, to the kids. Um, you know, I think he's going on to graduate. But I, I always think that, you know, we are doing good things and kids are making the connections that they need to make. And uh, Jason, you know, one of many stories that I can tell you that uh, uh, did connect with the University of Iowa and went on to, to, to graduate, you know, because that's our goal. You know, we want these kids to graduate. If you saw in the photo, we started with uh, our emblem and then graduation, and we end it with uh, education as our future and a graduation shot. So 
uh, all right, all right, all right. So thank you. <laughs> oh, Mike. Oh, apparently we've still got some more comments here. Excuse Sorry, me, I Director just, Dickman. I just wanted to ask one quick question. Um, if there's any ideas that you had that we as a board could do to, to help support your program, it's obviously doing great things. Um, and so what, what can we do to, to help that? Um, did you bring your checkbook with you? you know? <laughs> uh, as I mentioned, we are 5013C. Um, a lot of the funds that we get, uh, I've learned uh, the art of uh, writing grants. Um, and uh, I've been successful on a few occasions, but a lot of it is, you know, out of pocket. Uh, our donations are certainly the generosity of uh, of Miss Moore uh, and whatnot. So, yeah, you know, we we can take what we can get. You know, we take the kids on field trips and things like that. Uh, you know, we support uh, the trip through buying them whatever we need to buy. Um, our long-term goal in the future is to, to have a traveling college tour, uh, maybe in the year, uh, you know, 2015, that's our goal. Uh, so we're raising funds for that. We're going to have some fundraisers uh, that we're going to be, be uh, networking and, and planning. Uh, but yeah, certainly, you know, if, uh, you know, it's tax deductible, so whatever you can give would be greatly appreciated. And, and that could be through the, the, the principles of the building. Uh, you know, if you didn't make a no uh, donation through this school and then somehow it would get to me in the program, so. Okay, anybody, oh, Director Snyder, this may go on for a while, excuse oh, me. I'm sorry, I'll be quick. I just wanted to thank uh, you guys for getting up and talking. Um, that's why I wanted to hear from the kids because we can all sit back and say that the program's effective and, uh, but you know its ultimate goal is is sitting right in front of us and uh, you kids are amazing and uh, we are all very proud of you and this if uh, not the best program in our district it's definitely one of them and thank you for all you do thank you all right anybody else uh director cool sure hey uh I don't know if you, you guys back there, you kids heard it or not, but what, one of the things that we do here in Davenport Schools is we believe strongly in character, building character. And one of the things that Mike projected here this evening was emblematic of the kind of character that we try to uh, inspire our kids with, and that's humility. How many times did he say, we thank you for giving us time here in the school district to do what we do? We thank you for what you have done for these children and for all of the people in our district. It's so important. Uh, and you know, I, I think about it, we're so far away from envisioning the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King, and we can't stop yet. And what you folks are doing is continuing that march. He's not here anymore, but his people are, and we're still moving in that direction, despite the fact that we, we find roadblocks, uh, the Supreme Court with affirmative action, and and um, the failure to allow us to integrate our schools based on color. Um, those things set us back, I believe, a ways. But it's people like you that continue this march forward. And I thank you all for what you have done. And seeing these kids and the presentations that you did is the reward that, that we are blessed with. And, and, and thank you. Thank you very much. I, I would ask if, if possible, uh, some of these kids have probably never been to a school board meeting before. If we could have a photo moment with the kids coming and so that's something sure. that they can have, is, if that's allowable. Yeah, okay. if there's something we can do, that'd be great. Okay, just, just like the other group did behind the, behind the you school You guys board. need to slide over a little bit. Come on. This actually would be good practice. <laughs> she does. Yeah. Mr. President, I'd, I'd just like to say that this is probably going to be good practice for all of you guys because we expect to see you up here getting some of these scholarships that we awarded this 
tonight through the Davenport Schools Foundation in about four or five years. It'll be your turn. So. All right, well, what a great way to start off a school board meeting with these two presentations. We'll move on to the rest of our meeting and we'll start with communications. Uh, Director DeFau, would you mind reading our communications for us, please? May 29th, a public discussion of the bell time schedule at 6 to 7.30 p.m. at North's Auditorium. May 30th, last day of school. June 1st, graduation at the iWireless, 12 to 4 p.m. June 2nd, 5.30 p.m., Committee of the Whole, ASC Jim Hester Boardroom. June 9th, 7 p.m., regular meeting, ASC Jim Hester Boardroom. June 23rd, 7 p.m., regular meeting, ASC Jim Hester Boardroom. Thank you very much. Normally, we would have open forum requests. However, this evening, there are none. Um, but I do want to remind members of our community that this is a great opportunity for any of you to come forward and to give input to the board uh, regarding school district issues or concerns. We always look forward to open forum requests. When you do come, try and get there a little bit early and fill out a request and give it to the secretary. Uh, may I have a motion regarding the consent agenda? Mr. President. Director Cluel. I move that the consent agenda be approved as written. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Call for the vote. Director Cluel. Yes. Director Dickman. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Sherwood. Yes. Director DeFau. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. We have a motion regarding approval of bills. Mr. President. Director Kluhl. I move that the board approve the following resolution as recommended by administration. The resolution is as follows. Resolved that all claims presented to the board having been duly certified as correct by the secretary, reviewed by the administration and board members, and they are hereby audited and allowed as just claims and warrants drawn in the treasury for the several amounts. Further resolve, the payment of claims and salaries be approved as presented for the periods of May 8, 2014 through May 21, 2014. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Call for the vote. Director Kluhl? Yes. Director Dickman? Yes. Director DeFau? Yes. Director Snyder? Yes. Director Sherwood? My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Superintendent report. Thank you, Mr. President. A little earlier, you might have seen a gentleman uh, adjusting the thermostat. Mike Maloney is our new director of operations. Just wanted to make sure he wasn't some strange person just wandering around adjusting things. Thank you, Mike, and welcome. Glad to have you here with us. 
Um, last week I attended the Scott County Regional Authority Spring uh, Cycle Grant Award. Several of us did. And um, I, we had $248,909 granted to us for the Creative Arts Academy, a district uh, Chromebook implementation, Madison Elementary Smart Boards, robotics and 3D engineering equipment for STEM classrooms, Stepping Stones Literacy Initiative, and a pre-K math curriculum. So again, the generosity of, of these authorities is just amazing what it does for the school district. And Mr. President, that concludes my report for tonight. All right, thank you very much. We'll move on to other items requiring action. We have a motion regarding approval of Children's Village West South parking lot renovation. Mr. President. Director Sherwood. I move the board to accept the administration's recommendation uh, to uh, for the lowest responsive, responsible bid of $105,754.50 from Centennial Contractors of Moline, Illinois. Thank you. May I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Call for the vote. Director uh, Sherwood. Yes. Director Cluel. Yes. Director DeFau. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Dickman. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> Thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of textbook adoption? Mr. President. Director Cluel. I move that the board approve the textbook adoption for the following courses AP Psychology, Chemistry, Geometry, German 1, 2, and 3, Physical Science, Chemistry based, Physical Science, Chemistry based, Physical Science, Physics based, and Physics and Pre K Math. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director DeFau. If Mr. Heller could come forward and speak to us about the modification in the German curriculum. The, uh, the modification, I went back after a meeting and I started looking at our numbers for German over the next, over this year, and then the difference between this year and next year. And I came up with some more real numbers in terms of students who are gonna be in the classroom uh, next year in German one, two, and three. And that allowed me to um, call back our rep and say, could I get a couple different bids on how much these textbooks would cost if we brought the numbers down? Um, so he, the, the uh, gentleman I spoke to, gave us a new quote for, I think it ended up saving us about $11,000. It was $30,994.92. Uh, we came back with uh, 130, 70, and 50 textbooks for the three levels based on enrollment numbers for next year. Other questions? Not any questions, but I guess an observation, if I can follow up, President Johansson. Sure, go ahead. Um, at the original board meeting, when this adoption was presented, uh, made the observation that all of the curriculum that was being recommended, with the exception of German, constituted core curriculum. And given our current financial circumstance, knowing that we have to face some very hard decisions in the next year, and that not all non-core courses are necessarily guaranteed, depending upon where we find ourselves, um, I still would like the board to at least consider whether or not we want to refrain from approving the German textbook adoption at this time, knowing that we can, we can move forward with it and not impact the courses in the fall, because my understanding is this isn't gonna be paid until after the change of the fiscal year, so July 1. Um, to allow us to have some conversation in that regard. I mean, it's not very, it's a stone's throw away that curriculums such as foreign language are being cut by other districts as a means to meet uh, budget constraints. So I just put it on the table. Well, to put it on the table, would you like to make an amendment to the motion? I'd at least like to have a conversation, which well, we could have in the context of the original motion, I believe. 
I guess I guess we could. Um, so the board has been asked by Director DeFau to think about and comment on this concept in the context of the original motion, which um, was made by Director Kluhl to accept the administration recommendation for the textbook adoptions as presented. Um, is there any additional discussion? Director Dickman. Uh, I would support an amendment as described by Director DeFall. Any additional, uh, Director Snyder. Is it still the case that German uh, is currently only being offered at Central? No, German one will be offered at all three schools next year. Okay, because um, I know that wasn't the case a few years back. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter started in German, had to go to Central for it, and then had to choose either continue on with German and drop band or start over with another language because it conflicted with her block schedule. And at the time, I believe it was only Central that had it, but all of them are going to have German one, but what about after that? See, that I don't, that's a decision that had to be made down the road by the people who make those decisions. Um, I know German one right now out at North, I think uh, we have a, a teacher who travels and teaches those classes at both schools. Uh, we have one teacher at West who teaches all German um, Gunter at Central can teach German and Spanish, and like I said, he's the one I think does the traveling. So, my concern with that is kind of leading kids down a path where they get one year in and then can't continue on with it and don't have their requirements met to get into college. Because uh, I believe a lot of them are two years to get in, four to get out, and it has to be of the same language. Uh, so, if they have to start over, they have to do it in a hurry. So, that I guess is a big concern to me. Director Sherwood. Uh, how long has it been since these adoptions? Uh, how, how old is this book? Uh, the book that they're currently using was adopted in 2003. 2003. I think is what I have on the. 11 years old. Yeah. And and what's our uh, policy on adoptions? We uh, remember. I <clears throat> I can't recall exactly. Director DeFau, do you have a pretty good recall of that policy? I believe it's 10 years. And is it a recommendation or a requirement? It's not a requirement. It's a recommendation. Okay. Yeah, ten years. Uh, and um, you currently have uh, enough text. Right. Of the textbook that we're currently using, right. we have enough text. Yes. And and the deficiencies in this text, as opposed to the new text, how would you characterize those? I'm not a German teacher. Yeah. Um, but the textbooks, there are some extra things that come with the new textbook series that this one, the current one that we have, does not. Software and a software. software yeah. um, they have an uh, e-reader. An e they have um, a cultural virtual trips that they can take. They get newspaper news from um, Germany and other German-speaking countries. And so those types of things are included with this new adoption that were not included with the other textbook. I mean, 2003, there have been a lot of technological advances since that point that um, – you know, that book just would not have. Sure. So. And and uh, following up on uh, Director Snyder's uh, point, the Central is currently the only place we can get the two, two and three years? No, they can go, you can go German two, three, and four at West and Central. West and Central. Right so now, North is the one that does not North have. right now does not have, if I look at my numbers, next year they will not have a German two, three, or four, but the other two high schools will. Is that because of the demand or for, for lack of uh, funding? I, I think it's because of demand. I don't think the kids who are the kids who took German one at North didn't sign up for German two, and I don't know if that's because they don't have, there wasn't the ability to hire, they don't have anybody there who can teach it, or I don't yeah, know maybe that. I don't know. Director Snyder's point: they may not, they may say there's a dead end and don't want to travel. That so, could be. Yeah. Um, what would be the downside of uh, postponing this? I don't know that there is necessarily a downside right now at this moment. I mean, I understand the financial restraints that everybody's under. Um, the book is 10 years old, right. going on 11 years. But um, I, I mean, if if it's worth sitting and talking about and, and seeing that we make the right decisions, then we make that's what we do. Yeah. I and mean, what are, when you say we save 10 grand, what is the the uh, bottom line on this particular textbook? What's it going to cost us? Um, the cost that we have, that the last quote I got was $30,994.92. And 
And I think the original quote was somewhere around 41. That takes like that. care of the that's, district for those four levels. That's all. That would be all three levels, but all three levels yeah. go into the fourth. And, you know, big deal over time, and we don't talk about it much. We've talked about it here, I think, twice since I've been on the board. What are you guys doing to stop loss on the on textbooks? Um, it's good that I'm up here because I kind of I deal with the Destiny textbook system, and we we're running inventory right now, and so we are trying to impress upon all the buildings that every textbook in the building needs to be inventoried. So the textbooks that are actually there are not coming up as lost. Um, we are requiring that all the high school teachers, even in a two-term class, check the textbooks in at the end of the first term and then check them back out again for second term so that we can kind of keep stopgap some of this loss. I mean, it's, it's not a perfect system. I don't think any <clears throat> system will be, but we're doing what we can to, to actually stem the flow of the lost textbooks. Yeah, I, mean, I think we've done a pretty decent job the last two years. It used to be a significant amount of money. It is, and, and uh, it's dropped. It, it, in the, in the two years that uh, Rudy and uh, my secretary and I have been kind of headlining things, that we've, we've seen a, uh, a recouping of some of that money. It's not near 500000 or whatever it was before. And when you say trying to impress, uh, Dr. Tate has a, a, a term he calls uh, non-negotiable. Um, mm -hmm. is, is that the level of impressment that you're uh, trying to achieve? I don't know if we've reached non-negotiable yet. I see. Um, but, I mean... I can tell them that they need to do this and that it is important that they do it um, until there's some other step taken. You know, we have to, we require them to do it. Yeah, and we, so. we get into the conversation of cutting uh, courses. Um, seeing money go out the door that can uh, be stopped is, mm -hmm. uh, is, you know, pretty hard to take. So, mm -hmm. but I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Director Kluhl. Mr. President, I'd like to offer an amendment to my motion. That would be to delete German 1, 2, and 3. And when you mean, you mean to delete that textbook adoption from for German motion. 1, 2, 3. Okay, is there a second to the motion to amend? Second. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Director Sherwood. Yeah, I guess I oppose it. I think that um, I think that the, the technological changes, especially in languages. Uh, my son teaches uh, Spanish and Latin at uh, in Chicago, and those kinds of abilities inside a textbook are really uh, transformative for a lot of kids. So the, the time we withhold that from kids, I think, uh, impacts them pretty pretty heavily. And we're talking thirty thousand dollars here. Um, so it's not a ton of money. It's, I mean, I, I know it all ma it mounds up and, and so forth, but uh, I don't think it, uh, to me, rises to the kind of level that would uh, cause me to hold off on this. Plus, I think that uh, the better the textbook, the better the, the system, the more kids we have uh, interested in taking it, which benefits us all, I think. Director DeFalm. And in my mind, this isn't a conversation about whether or not the textbooks for German 1, 2, and 3 need replaced. This is a conversation about what we're going to do in the next year to cut $4.5 million from our budget that is sustainable. And to remove something from the table that we may have to go to because we cannot cut core curriculum, I'm not willing to do at this point, especially when it's not detrimental to the courses at this time. And my understanding is it is not. We have, a, we have a textbook they're currently using. I mean. Any additional discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote on the amendment. And excuse me, let me make sure I've got this straight. All right. <clears throat> So the vote is only on the amendment, and the amendment is to remove German 1, 2, and 3 textbook adoptions listed at $30,994.92 uh, from the original motion, which is to adopt the administration recommendation for the total amount. I'll call for the vote. Uh, Director Cluel? Yes. Director DeFau? Yes. Director Dickman? Yes. 
Director Sherwood? No. Director Snyder? Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries on the amendment. We'll go back to the original motion. Is there any additional discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote, Director. And this is then the, the original motion with the amendment, which would be all of the courses listed except German 1, 2, 3 are not included. And the, the total amount would be 410-139-96 minus 30,994-92. Does that sound about right? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Pretty thorough. All right. yes. well, I just want to make sure we're getting this straight. We'll uh, call the vote for the motion. Director Cluel. Yes. Director Sherwood. Yes. Director Dickman. Yes. Director DeFau. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. My vote is yes. Motion carries. Thank you. May I have a motion regarding approval of lease for Creative Arts Academy? Mr. President. Director Cluel. I move that the board approve the Creative Arts Academy lease agreement between the Davenport Community School District and the Davenport Library Board of Trustees for the period of August 1st, 2014 through June 30th, 2015 as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Director Cluel. Just looking at the numbers, I, I had hoped that this would be a, a partnership with the city, and it appears to be pretty one-sided in terms of being contractual. We're paying them. Are we seeing any benefit? Has the city, the library board, given us any incentive to work with them? Because this is something that not only enhances our district of distinction, but enhances the city of Davenport as well. Well, I, we've just dealt with the library board at this point because this is all we're talking about is a place to um, house the 54 sixth graders and the 33 dream students, the 11th and 12th grade students um, during the day. So um, from a beneficial standpoint, we're getting a place to put people, which we don't have. Uh, to do that, we are um, really footing the bill for the construction cost to uh, provide one of their floors with the classrooms necessary and the computer labs. Um, so, uh, you know, we're getting a great benefit in having a place to go, and I'm not sure beyond that what else you might be looking for. We're, this doesn't include, we're not talking about the FIGI or the RME or anything at this point. We're just, here's where we're going to live. This will be our home room for our activities. So, again, just the fact that someone was willing to um, let us come in and say this is going to be our home, um, not only for one year, I hope for many years, I think is, is certainly an advantage to us. Um, we didn't have anybody else doing that. The library just came to us and said, hey, let's, let's do make this a partnership. And I think, again, having um, 50 more people, or if you take the whole day, having up to 80 more pe people in your facility is going to be a sacrifice and it's going to have to be a partnership that um, we're go they're going to have to live with. So. I see that they're, they're giving up something and, and losing a little bit of their control over at least one floor of their facility. And they're also gaining a vibrant group of students that I think is a benefit to the city. You know, the mayor is often want to say that as goes the school, so goes the city. I hope that we will have ongoing conversation with them about the benefit that this is providing and, and that they might work with us financially a little bit more. Uh, that's my only disappointment. I'm glad that the city has agreed, the Bettendorf Library, or the Davenport Library Board has agreed to to do this. I, I looked at the, um, at the facility the other day. They had the book sale there. It had everything cleared out. I can see that it's going to be a, a wonderful place for, for this operation, but um, I'm... Uh, I would be remiss to say uh, that I was totally satisfied with the city's cooperation. Any additional discussion? Director Snyder. I have one question with uh, this Creative Arts Academy. What uh, do we have in place or do we plan on putting in place as far as how we're going to feed these kids while they're in this program? They'll be going back to Sudla before lunch, so they'll eat there. Okay. All right, thank you. 
Director Dickman. Um, Superintendent Tate, just for the record, would you mind um, talking a little bit about why we chose this location? Um, I don't know if the, the public has, has heard a lot about that yet, and I think it would just be good. Well, it started off by they were the ones that offered and came to us, so that, that was a start. Um, and immediately we started looking, and um, they had the one floor that they offered, and we had to determine, yes, it would work for us. So uh, we spent a lot of time crawling over that space just to talk about the numbers and the size and whether we could put two classrooms in there and have administrative space and space for a computer lab. And uh, it did work, and then we had to talk about well, what had changes had to be made. And the um, the balloon payment of the first month of 199130 is um, from our PEPL funds, which we can use for leasing, but that's really to fix the place up so we can go into it. Um, we had talked, and a lot of people had asked us to look at the Figgy Museum, and, and in fact, we did look there. I quite frankly didn't see a place for two classrooms of 25 students each and they did not offer to host us for the home room although we are working with an arrangement to send students over there on a daily basis so I think it was the fact that um, the, the library offered and it worked we looked initially at the possibility of renting buildings and looking at vacant buildings and the expense of that would be uh, astronomical so um, again, with a place where we could partner and where, as Director Kluhl points out, we've got students right downtown where people can see it, uh, to me, was an advantage. So those are the reasons that we, we selected the library. Thank you. Any additional discussion? I've got a question on the, uh, I hadn't really reviewed the whole agreement too much, but under the Section 6, Quiet Enjoyment, says that the lessor covenants and agrees that so long as lessee observes and performs all the agreements and covenants required of it hereunder, lessee shall peaceably and quietly have, hold and enjoy the premises for the term without any encumbrance or hindrance by the lessor. So <coughs> does that mean uh, that we have access to that area any time, uh, day or night? It, it does as long as if it's out of school hours that what they want from us is just let them know they're going to be in there. Otherwise, on evenings, weekends, summer, then that will be space that they can certainly use. But um, through discussions with them, there's been no hesitation to say if you've got parents coming in the evening, if you've got an evening program, you have something you need to do on the weekend, if we'll let them know, then certainly we could use it. But it is, in fact, their space to use, and I think they do intend to use it on weekends and uh, on, on the summer. So, so my question was thinking about, say, an evening meeting uh, where we wanted to talk with parents or something like that. Could we use that space? And also there was uh, another auditorium space that was part of this. Is that correct? The auditorium is not part of this agreement, but again, they said that um, we could use it at any time that we just would ask them for it. I think it's little used, so I don't think we'd have trouble, but it's a great place to hold presentations and to have music, have dance, and things of that nature. Okay, great. Is there any other discussion? Oh, Superintendent Tate. I wanted to ask our uh, Chief Finance Officer to give us an idea about the Pebble Fund and how, how we look and how what this will do um, if we take this first balloon payment out of that fund. At the end of last year, we had a carryover of $12.5 million in our Pebble Fund. And on an annual basis, we get property tax revenues of about $5.5 million. So you can see there was a couple years worth of funding that had built up. Um, when I looked at this at the end of April, we'd only spent about $4.2 million. So as of the end of April, we still had almost $14 million in the Pebble Fund that um, was available. Okay, any additional discussion? Director Sherwood. Yeah, can someone tell me what a wet lab is? It is simply a sink with water. So that's, so they just, call it a wet lab. That's just a typical thing that they use. And, and what's it for? It, it just happens to be there right now. I see. So, so, so we're not going to take it out. All right, quite a bit of space there, though. So, yeah. And the uh, restrooms, uh, th they don't exist now, do they? Yes, they do. They do? Yep. In that spot. Okay. Yep. 
So the, the kids will not have to use the public restroom outside. That's true. Right. Good. Thank you. Director Snyder. I guess uh, that brings up another question. I know uh, originally we had talked about that the kids will have their own entrance into this facility that uh, the average public uh, will not be using for the library. Um, and I'm assuming also that uh, this is closed off and in basically secure from the library itself that uh, the public won't have access to this area uh, while the kids are there? That is true. We'll, we'll be able to exit if we had to from an emergency standpoint. Our entrance will be from the uh, 4th Street, but that's true. The, uh, this will be our space, and people from the library will not be able to gain entrance. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Director DeFau. And I'm going to be remiss if I don't uh, comment that while I understand and appreciate the desire to be in the heart of downtown, that I do think that we have a facility just a few blocks north that we own that we could modify for this program and not take on a lease agreement at a time again where we're looking for ways to cut cost and not increase cost. And I don't believe the lease can be paid out of Pebble. That's a general fund expenditure. Is that correct? No. That's not correct. Okay. All right. Well, be that as it may, I just, I've had that conversation with Dr. Tate, and I understand that he uh, is, feels otherwise. But. Any additional discussion? Okay, we'll call for the vote. Uh, Director Kluhl. Yes. Director Dickman. Yes. Director Snyder. Yes. Director Sherwood. Yes. Director DeFau. No. My vote is yes. Motion carries. We're into discussion items. Superintendent Tate, you want to lead us on the budget discussion. The board has asked. The board has asked that we discuss uh, budget items and possible reductions for the 15-16 school year in conjunction with our business meetings. And thus far, we have talked about on April 28th, the block versus traditional schedules, increasing class size in elementary and intermediate schools. On May 12th, we, talk about, we talked about combining school leadership in Washington and Sedlow, Monroe and Smart, Eisenhower and McKinley, and Buffalo and Bluegrass. These discussions have been merely to present the item or the option and the board to ask questions or to determine whether we want to continue to consider these items. So this certainly is not a decision point. But at some time, things like the block schedule versus uh, traditional we need to really bring back and uh, very seriously discuss it. Tonight, the agenda committee is asked to uh, bring forward three more recommendations. One is reducing the department budgets by 5% for a savings of $156,000. We've done this for the last several years, and these would be the department budgets and not the school budgets. Another is offering an early retirement for savings of $1.5 million. And uh, we could, next year, we had indicated there would not be an early retirement offered this year, but we could offer an early retirement. And then a third one is to rene renegotiating the superintendent's contract for savings of $50,000. Um, I offered that one because you were, the first thing you're going to hear when you take any reduction to the public is what about the administration, and you need to start considering very carefully about how you're going to do that, and certainly a place to start would be the superintendent's contract. So I, I offer those to you, the department budgets. I know that each year we talk about, gee, we can't keep doing this and keep doing this, but the last time we did it, I asked for an impact statement from the departments, and I'm not at the point yet that I can say we're hurting and it is, we're not going to be able to support the classrooms with the reductions. At some point I might, but I would recommend that you consider seriously doing that. So those are the three things that I offer for discussion for this evening. Okay, thank you very much. So <clears throat> I would entertain discussion on any of these uh, three at any time. We don't have to take them in order. Is there any discussion? Director Kluhl. 
I appreciate the comments about uh, reducing the department budget and the trend, but can you talk about what impact this would have? Another 5% reduction. Can you talk more specifically about what that means? You mean things they probably wouldn't buy? Um, I would think we'd buy less food. We spend a lot of money on food. Um, Marsha, you told me what the figure was one time. How much is it? It's over $100,000. And that would be food for? Well, whenever we have training, we, we purchase food. It's a great thing. Um, whenever we have all-day training, we'll purchase food so people don't have to go out for lunch, and so perhaps we save some time. But again, um, that's where I'd imagine when the squeeze starts that uh, budgets would start to, to be reduced. Um, each each department is going to be a little bit different, so it may be in, in technology. There may be a license that they don't uh, get, or there may be some uh, equipment that they don't purchase. So, I mean, I'd have to call up each one. I, in, in my department, for example, um, we have a lot of, uh, I'm in several organizations, so I probably would drop my membership in an organization or two to, to save some some money. But But again, I don't think we're at the point where to squeeze into it, where it's going to not go to the, um, where it's going to go into the classroom. And one thing we can certainly do when you get to the point you really want to discuss this is have the department's head tell us, you know, what it is you'll give up if you have to cut 5% and it'll be different in each one. Thank you. Director DeFau. I'd like to know cumulatively in the last five years, not just by percentage, but by dollar amount, how much we've cut from department budgets. Director Sherwood. Yeah, and uh, on the early retirement, I haven't got a problem with early retirement, but I don't see that as a sustainable cut. I don't, I don't see that as something that uh, moves from year to year. And so uh, while it might kick the can down the road a little bit, it's not going to be the kind of uh, sustainable thing that uh, we're talking about. At some point, you run out of uh, um, some of these higher-end salaries, I think. You at least reduce down to where they're not nearly as significant. And you do. I mean, the savings, obviously, is year one when you have the veterans leaving and you're hiring at a lower rate. And I, I'm, I'm not sure who asked the question a couple of years ago, or maybe it was last year. Well, what is the point? But I think it's several years down. So I, I, it is kicking the can, but it's not going to be two years or three years. I think it's going to be a lot more than that. Maybe we can do some thinking about it, yeah. about how that might – and I think we can make some – guesstimations of how many people were higher and how much lower and how long it'll take for those to catch up. But it, it would be a, a longer time and gives a little bit of ble breathing room. Right. Director Snyder. Oh. Excuse me, I thought you had anybody else. Director Dickman. On the last item, uh, thinking long term, um, renegotiating the, the position to be uh, 0.75 full-time em employee, um, what do you think that that would do to our ability to recruit uh, a new superintendent when when the time comes for that? I'm not, I, this would be for 1516, so you'd be renegotiating with me. Uh, you know, one way to do it is you work four days a week instead of five, or you just say we're not going to pay you that anymore, and you're going to have to take less. Um, you would have to look at the market value and see that's you know that's 25 percent less than what i'm making right now um and just see what other people are making in the area so i i can i can do that and just quickly you know see what the comparison is because it's a great question all right thank you anybody else director sherwood and following up on that do we know of any districts of this size that have a 0.75 superintendency i don't Anything else? Uh, Director DeFau. Um, in regard to that renegotiation, would there be any benefit to, rather than looking at salary, to look at benefits um, such as deferred compensation and some of those other things that are offered? So that, I mean, my question is, where is the reduction most impactful and where is it for us and least impactful for you? 
because it may be that there's some other portions of the contract that could be renegotiated so that there isn't a, a salary it like travel and car and different very different things like that anybody else um, I have a question regarding this renegotiating and I was wondering if it's legal for a superintendent to only be represented at 0.75 FTE. Do you do you know offhand, Marcia? I mean, we can find out pretty easily. Well, I, I asked that question. It's legal. Okay, it is. Yep. How how small could we go? I I don't know. I didn't I didn't ask that. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Director Defoul. And honestly, the thing that concerns me is that we know the amount of time that you spend doing your job and serving this district and i do not believe you are overcompensated by any means so that while i appreciate your leadership in putting this on the table and making the suggestion it would take an awful lot of convincing for me to say that is a path i would want to take Director Snyder. I completely agree with Director DeFau. Um In the grand scheme of things, $50,000 doesn't put us a heck of a lot closer to four and a half million, and I don't think one individual needs to uh, bear that burden on their shoulders. Um, and uh, it would take a lot to convince me of that as well. Director Sherwood. You know, not to make a point, but the fifty thousand dollars buys us uh, German textbooks with twenty grand left over. So, anybody else, Director Clue? I uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your offer, of the renegotiation of the the contract of point seven five FTE, in terms of how important you believe that your administrative staff working for you is that you would take this hit before there might be an opportunity uh, in administration somewhere else um, first I didn't say you'd be negotiating with me I think you just got to make a decision that what the superintendency is worth and what you're willing to pay and then I would have to decide if it's something I want to continue to do or if maybe you need to renegotiate with somebody else um, so I'm, I'm not throwing myself on my sword and saying I'm going to give you fifty thousand dollars back. It is an is an option you need to consider. I think um, because again, you, you hear it. You know the cry is the administrators need to suffer, and when that's done, then we'll listen to these other things. So it's it's just a start, and and um, and again, it may not be you're negotiating with, but if you put a stake in the ground and say that's all we're paying for a superintendency then I might have to make a decision or not. You know, it was um, several years ago that we did uh, a comparison across UEN in terms of administrative costs, and at that time, Davenport was, if not lowest, quite low. I think it would be useful to, to run that again. Did you have more, Director Kluhl? Additional discussion, Director Snyder. I guess one other point in regards to the superintendent uh, savings, uh, when you're giving up $50,000 in salary for the superintendent, I think you're also giving up a certain amount of accountability. Um, and I guess that concerns me as well. Anybody else? <coughs> Director DeFau. And I do appreciate Director Dickman's concern about how that positions us when we start looking to the future and the point in time that we will be hiring another superintendent. Additional discussion. Hey, I want to put my two cents in here. It's uh, because that that's a grueling um, exercise to hire a superintendent. And um, 
On top of that, the superintendent has recommended to the board for the past two years to not receive uh, an increase in his salary on top of everything else. Uh, he's still at the original uh, salary that we started with, I believe, all of the um, the other parts of the contract that were originally negotiated. So I, too, I would have an incredibly uh, difficult time with this. And I appreciate the superintendent clarifying <coughs> that negotiating and, and thinking about what it's worth um, as opposed to negotiating with him on something like that. So <coughs> we've talked about these three. And even though I've heard the board express concern about um, renegotiating the superintendent's contract, I haven't heard the board say that they don't want to consider any of these three as we look to the future in uh, cutting our budget. Is that, am I reading the board correctly? Director Sherwood. Yeah, you're not reading me correctly, I guess. The only way I'd see a reduction in the superintendent's salary is if we had across the board reductions, if that was required, and we did a 10% uh, rollback of all administrators. Um, I'm not even sure that's legal or you can do that, but uh, uh, that's the only way I'd consider it uh, in that context. But um, as it stands, it, it stand alone, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't consider it for all the reasons you have already articulated, all of you. So I understand Director Sherwood would not consider it. Director Dickman, did you have something uh, to say? I had not uh, said this part yet, but um, I, I don't think that that is a, that the renegotiation of the position to 7.75 is, is a worthy avenue. I think that especially uh, a district of our size that trying to have a superintendent um, only work 0.75 full T FTE is uh, not feasible. Director Snyder. I agree with, excuse me, I agree with Director Sherwood that I would, uh, the first two are definitely not off the table, but I would, I could never, never support number three of uh, reducing superintendent's uh, contract. Okay, well, uh, Director DeFau. I guess I would reiterate that I would not support a reduction in time and a roll back to 0.75, but the, if there were other savings that might be available, and that may might warrant some further conversation, but it would be one of the last things on my list of priorities. Yeah, I think we're going to have a lot of things at the bottom of our list by the time we're done. Um, well, we've got kind of a split in the way the board is is feeling about this. I haven't, I don't have a consensus. Dre or Superintendent Tate, what are your thoughts on this? I think let me look at uh, market value in the area and then look at some other portions of the contract and we'll just keep going. That's okay. Okay, so you'll give us some more information. It isn't quite off the table, but we understand the sentiments of the board. Any additional discussion on any one of these items? Reducing department budgets, uh, we haven't talked much about, um, although we've got a request for some information. Uh, offering early retirement, um, registered that it is somewhat of a budget cut and somewhat kicking the can down the road, and uh, the discussion on renegotiating the superintendent's contract or those variations that we've talked about. Any other discussion? Okay, we'll move on to uh, changing start times for regular board meetings. Uh, Director DeFau, I'd like you to consider starting that discussion. You're, you're the uh, one that brought that up a couple of times. So could you go ahead and start the discussion? Sure. Um. And if I had thought about it, I would have spoken to Mary 
earlier this week and asked, or next last week and asked her to provide some information. But does that say nine o'clock back there? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. If we would manage to leave this meeting before 9.30 tonight, I think that would be the second time in the last year mm -hmm. that we have had a regular board meeting that concluded before 10. And that's with several days where we have added on special call meetings that have begun at 5. And while I appreciate and value the level of commitment that the members of this board and our staff have to this, because I think it's disrespectful of our staff that we have meetings that run until 10 and 11 o'clock and 11.30 was the record here about a month ago. Um, when we know that at 7 a.m. or 7.30, they're gonna be back in this building and being expected to um, you know, serve the district. Um, I think that if we're not able to manage our agendas so that we can't leave before 10 o'clock at night, that the least we could do is to move the start time up until 6.30 during the school year and 6 o'clock during the summer so that we might have a chance of getting out of here by 9 o'clock or 8.30 as the case might be. I do recall times when we used to do that. Um, but I think, you know, in consideration of what we have on our plate the next year, and it's not the opportunity to add agenda items because we now have an extra hour available to us. And yes, I feel very strongly about this. I think that, um, there's such a thing as balance, and I think we've become rather imbalanced in the last year, especially. So my two cents for what it's worth. Okay, thank you for that. Um, additional discussion? Director Sherwood. Yeah, I don't have any problem starting earlier. I mean, we uh, started 5.30 for Committee of the Whole. The only downside, I think, is that uh, if we have people elected who are um, career people out there in the community uh, that uh, it makes it more difficult for them to participate uh, if we especially if we have things to go on before the meeting um, but I that's kind of a minimal thing but uh, I don't have any problem with it my guess is that we'll still be here as late as we are now we just uh, started earlier additional discussion director Dickman I'll uh, go ahead and throw my support behind the the 630 or earlier starting time um, getting home, you know, 11, 11.30, past 11.30, it's, it's challenging for me, and, and uh, my day is a very variable start time. I can't even imagine for our staff um, how hard that is. Anybody else? Director Snyder. I also support the earlier start times, 6.30, 6 o'clock. Um, much before 6 could prove to be difficult on occasion for me as... Uh, I work out of town a lot, but I, uh, I would absolutely not be opposed to as early as 6. Anything else? All right. Director Kuhl? Whitey's closes at 10, so if we could get out of here earlier, that would. I think 6 and 6.30 is, is fine, as long as we don't, um, you know, close the doors to some folks who are working, and I think that would probably be minimal. So I'm, I'm certainly amenable to 6 and 6.30. I think it's a good idea. Director Schreiber. Oh, excuse me. I thought it was an interesting innuendo that Director DeFowle had about um, if we can't make our agendas more efficient, then we should do this. I, uh, and I, I've probably taken that to the extreme because I think we all appreciate what the agenda committee's done to try to include a whole lot in our agendas. Um, and frankly, there's a lot going on. So... Uh, I, I think that um, it's an interesting um, correlation with the bell time schedule in that a lot of the kids said that if you, um, if you make us start school later, we'll stay up later. And it's kind of like this idea of if we move the agenda earlier, that the agenda committee might hold us hostage by putting more information, more things in the agenda 
but I'm, I'm reasonably comfortable that they won't do that to us. I'm done. Thank you. Director Sherwood. Yeah, I'd just like to ask all you folks, is, is compressing this going to have any impact? Do you have meetings you regularly, regularly make? Is there anything happening around the community that would, this would impact your ability to be here? Director DeFau. For clarification, I think I said manage, not efficient. Any additional discussion? Well, I've got a couple of uh, comments. There, there are a lot of issues that are going to be addressed in the next few months. And, and I will say that we have um, board requests that Probably, in fact, earlier during the agenda committee, uh, some of these requests are being scheduled for later this fall. And so that's the kind of schedule that the agenda committee is uh, dealing with. And there are a lot of really important issues. There are philosophical discussions. There are technical discussions, strategic discussions, of course, the budget discussions, all of this. And um, actually, in terms of of managing the agendas, one of the the ways to manage time would be to manage uh, the meeting instead of managing the agendas. And that's something that um, I've thrown on the table a couple of times in the past two years. And I have been admonished strongly. Um, for trying to enforce any type of um, restriction of time during the board meetings. So in general, I do support the earlier start time. I, I am concerned about the possibility that Director Kluwell mentioned that it may not be a, a managing of the agenda so much as managing the meetings that the board believes that it has more time and so will continue to talk to later times. Whatever it is, I'm willing to start it. Uh, if it sounds like there's consensus for earlier start time, if it's okay with the board, um, I'd like to suggest that we um, let the agenda committee come up with some start times, and it'll be somewhere between the 6 and 6.30. So unless there's anything opposed to that, that's what we'll do. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much for that. We'll move on to administrative reports. Are there any board reports or requests? Director Snyder. I had the uh, privilege to attend the uh, STARS Mentoring Partnership uh, end of year celebration at J.B. Young. Uh, I don't think it was last week, I think it was two weeks ago. Um, that was uh, pretty amazing program to see those kids and uh, the success that they've had um, and I think uh, as far as the mentors go um, I still think when you have a successful mentoring program those mentors get as much out of that program as the kids do um, Deb had put together one heck of a uh, end of year celebration I saw a lot of smiles in there a lot of kids proud of their accomplishments a lot of parents proud of the kids accomplishments um, it was a uh, pretty amazing collaboration uh, that came together and uh, some pretty good things going on there. Um, Deb should be uh, very proud of that program and Larry, St uh, Larry Roberson was there and uh, there was quite a few people there and it was just an outstanding evening. Thank you. Any additional reports or requests? Director Sherwood. Just wanted to mention that we all attended the uh, Kimberly Center graduation last Tuesday and that uh, uh, I think it might have been the biggest one that we've ever had as far as uh, uh, public being there. And we uh, did a pretty good job of filling up St. Ambrose's uh, auditorium and um, uh, a lot of really impressive kids uh, that uh, are graduating because of the foresight of this board and the boards before it uh, to establish that program and the leadership of uh, Sherry uh, uh, um, Womack, who's uh, moving on to the Keystone Academy, and Brandon. Um, great staff there, and, and um, 
uh, I was a little disappointed that no one, and I kept waiting for it, no one mentioned that that was the last graduating class for the Kimberly Center. The next graduating class will be Mid-City High School, and we'll have a whole different kind of um, flavor to it, I think. I, th there's a lot of excitement. I attended a retirement party for one of the teachers, uh, and there's a lot of excitement for the idea that uh, the district is finally calling us a high school. Uh, that's, uh, that's a big deal for these guys. So uh, uh, there will be a different kind of a uh, swagger to these kids, I think, as they, uh, as they move uh, through mid-city. And um, uh, so I just want to mention that it was, it was kind of a special night for a lot of people. Uh, and the second thing that, that I was involved in is that uh, Dr. Tate has uh, started the committee to work on um, a presentation of the board on, uh, on I issues that uh, are uh, methodologies for impacting uh, poverty and the issues of poverty. And uh, uh, our uh, illustrious leader here has uh, been kind enough to appoint me to that committee. And, and I just want to publicly acknowledge that Dr. Tate has a certain genius about how he establishes these things and envisions the, uh, the work that has to be done and how that uh, is, uh, is structured. Uh, and uh, it's all very tight and logical and, and uh, within a kind of a scope, and it, it, just, it just works. So I just want to tell you, Art, you do a fine job with that. It's a, a unique skill you have. Anyway, that's, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Any additional reports? Director Kluhl. A couple of meetings. Uh, another um, uh, effort started by Dr. Tate was a meeting led by Mr. Schneiden and uh, Director um, um, Maria Dickman was there, along with myself. Rich Cluel was there. And uh, uh, we had uh, a good meeting talking about school climate and uh, things that we might do to empower students and staff to um, rid themselves of the impediments of unhappiness. Realizing that we can't make people happy, we can certainly create climates where people uh, and kids and teachers at school can, um, can feel free, feel lifted from the burden of unhappiness. Uh, also, um, the President and I attended Multicultural Day at McKinley School last week, which was a fantastic event. and. I was just thinking about how that building being built in the late 30s was never, never accustomed to different ethnicities. You know, it was a very McClellan Heights white school, but boy, walking into that school last week was just a rainbow of color and voices and languages. It was just a festive day and makes me proud to be in the Davenport Community District where we celebrate that diversity. It was wonderful. Thank you. Any other reports? Uh, Director Snyder. One other one I forgot to mention was uh, uh, Director Dickman and I uh, attended the um, science and technology, I guess I'll call it an expo, at the Davenport Public Works building for sixth and seventh graders. And uh, I've said it before, there's nothing like walking into a room of kids and uh, being the most scientifically and technologically inept person in the room. Uh, those kids are pretty amazing. They uh, all spoke, or spoke passionately about their, uh, their projects and there was a lot of good things going on in there. Anything else? Um, I've got a couple of reports before I get on to the uh, requests. Um, I wanted to thank <coughs> Superintendent Tate for uh, setting up a couple of these committees to go ahead and, and get moving on our priorities. And when it happened, it was moving at lightning speed from my perspective. And uh, he was asking for appointments and we made the appointments and um, at that point um, I selected people for those committees and just made them um, after those individuals had accepted but I I was remiss in not letting the board know that I had done that and I apologize for that uh, but I do appreciate Director Sherwood, Director Cluel, and Director Dickman for uh, volunteering to participate on those two committees uh, I also wanted to publicly thank Mr. Maloney for figuring out how to turn the uh, air conditioning on in here and keeping it nice and temperate for us 
uh, during the school board meetings. Sometimes that gets challenging uh, during the summer, but this is the way I like it. So thank you very much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, I've got two, inf two requests. First request is from D Director Dickman, dated 52714. What would be the approximate cost of putting solar panels in all of our buildings, and how much would the district be able to save from the general fund each year from that level of investment in solar panels? Second is a, an information request from Director Snyder, 527-2014. How are administrators evaluated versus the evaluation process of teachers, paras, custodial food service, et cetera? With that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned.